Welcome to the Creality CR Scan Lizard User Guide video series. In this video, I will cover how to 3D scan a target object in the table scan mode. Check the timestamps in the description of this video to quickly jump to sections that may interest you. If you're enjoying the content so far, then consider supporting me through my support pages. Otherwise, just subscribe and like the video to help my channel grow. As always, all links in the description of this video, so go down below and check them out. Before we begin, you should be set up correctly for table scan mode. If you haven't already watched the previous video specifically on this topic, then I recommend watching that first and then coming back to watch this one. If you have watched it and you're all set up to start scanning in the table scan mode, then start the CR Studio software. And a quick note that I'm currently on the latest version of the software, which at time of recording is 2.3.7.0018. Anyway, enough chat, let's get into it. Click on the preview button and you should see a preview window appear in the top right, which I like to call the viewfinder window. Place your target object on the turntable and make any adjustments to the scanner. You want the scanner to be aimed roughly to the middle of the target object, and it should be seeing some of the turntable bed as well. It doesn't need to see the whole thing though. Once happy with the positioning, click on the large pink button that is counting the time. Now remove the target object so that the turntable is clear and click on Initial. You should see a pink mesh appear which is the turntable bed being scanned. It only needs to view this for a couple of seconds, so click on the pink counter button again to stop the initialization. Put the target object back on the turntable and click on the scan button to begin the first scan. It should slowly turn around and be scanning the target object, creating a mesh of it. Don't worry about how rough it looks. This step is messy and doesn't represent the final outcome. I like to call these scan layers, as we need to do this step a few more times to build up the layers and get the best results. It will automatically stop after about 30 seconds and do a quick processing of the scan. Our first scan layer is now done. To do another scan layer, click on the append button, and I'm also going to bump the brightness up to 3, and then click on scan. For the brightness, I like to start at 2 or 3. In the top right, you can see the viewfinder window and notice all the red spots. The red is indicating reflections, and you're looking for a balance of seeing a target object and not having too much red. So my process is to normally do two scans per position and changing the brightness between those two layers. Then I'll move my target object and do two scans, and then probably move the target object one more time and do two more scans. The idea is to get all angles of the target object, which will require putting the object in different positions so that you see areas that are not seen from another position. Again, the scan automatically finishes, and a short processing follows. Once complete, click on Append, and before scanning, you want to reposition the target, so here I'm laying it on its side, and then I'll click Scan. I'm going to fast forward through these scans to speed the video up a bit. That's another scan layer done, and again, I want two layers in this position, so I click Append, and I'm also going to try bumping the brightness up to level 4, and then clicking on scan to begin. Right away we can see there's a problem with this brightness as it's too much. The areas where there is a lot of red is barely scanning, and it's losing sync at times and just messing up the scan. This layer is going to be no good, and instead of waiting for things to finish, we can click on the timer button to immediately stop the scan. Let the software process, and then on the right hand side panel, we can select our layer and click on the trash icon to delete it. I'm going to step the brightness back down to 2 and scan again. That looks much better. Again, let's fast forward through this bit. Ok, one more reposition, so I'm going to flip the target object on its back. Click append, and leave the brightness at 2, and then click scan. Once again, I'm going to speed up through these steps. But all I'm doing is scanning the layer and then adjusting the brightness to 3 and doing another scan. I think that is enough scans for this object. To recap, I've done two scan layers in each position, with a brightness of 2 for one layer and 3 for the second layer. The positions were standing upright, laying on its backside, and then laying on its front side. In total, we have six scan layers which we can see on the right hand panel named table scan 1, 2, 3, etc. It's always a good idea to save your project, which can be done by going to File, Save Project, and giving the project a name. From here, our next task is to align and process our mesh data. Before we begin, let's just go over a quick movement recap. To zoom in and out, just use the middle scroll button. To pan around, you hold down the middle mouse button 
and drag around. And then to rotate the camera view, just hold down the left mouse button and drag around. So that's how you move around in the model space. On the right hand side here, we have all our scans, which I like to call layers. You can turn these on and off by just clicking on the little eye icon on the side. To begin, we want to do an auto alignment. So we're just going to make sure all these layers are back on, making sure it's selected to auto, and then click the align button. This may take a little while depending on how many layers you have, so just give it a little bit of time to align each of the layers. Once that is finished, just click to rotate around the model and check that all the layers have aligned correctly. In most cases, the automatic alignment does a pretty good job. You can turn on and off some of the layers just to double check that they are all aligned. They don't have to be pinpoint accurate close enough because the processing stage will take care of the rest of that. But in some situations, you may find one or two or maybe more layers aren't completely aligned correctly. So how do you do that? How do you manually align? For this example, I'm going to turn off all the layers and then I'm just going to turn on one layer. And this is also going to show you how to manually rotate an object. So for example, let's say this was just out of alignment a little bit compared to the rest of our layers. And we want to get this one layer back in line with the rest of them. The first thing we want to do is pick a layer that's going to be our base layer that everything comes to. To make things simple, I'm just going to choose table scan one in this case. And the layer we want to move is table scan two. As we can see, it's just out of alignment here. The first thing I might want to do is move that off to the side to make things a little easier to see. To make sure we don't move any other layers, I'm just going to make sure everything else is hidden and just our table scan two is highlighted. To move this layer, you need to go over to the side where it has enable transform operator and click on that. This will allow you to individually rotate and move layers. So this is now enabled. Our layer is selected. To move it out of the way, you hold down Alt in Windows and the middle mouse button and then drag it to the side. And if I turn back on table scan one, you can see it's now moved out of the way. The reason why I turn all the other layers off is because whenever you use this button, it's going to move or rotate whatever you click. So if you have layers overlapping each other, it's very easy to move the incorrect layer and there's no undo feature in this software. So you have to go back to a previous save to get things back to where you want to. So it's easier just to turn off everything that you're not going to be touching so you don't make that mistake. So with our layer out of the way to make things a little easier to see, we can turn back on our base layer and we might just want to rotate this layer just a little bit, just to kind of like get it to roughly the same space. Kind of similar to our base, it'll make it just a little easier to pick up alignment points between these two layers. We go over to the align tab and then we go into manual mode. This wording is not entirely correct. It should say select the model to align to, in my opinion because whatever layer is in here is basically your base layer and anything in here is going to move into position of that base layer. So what I mean is if we want everything to go to table scan one, just to keep things simple, I like to pick one base layer and everything moves to that point. Otherwise it can get very confusing. So table scan one, I'm going to elect as my base layer and then we have table scan two. So for instance, if I had table scan three here as well, it's you could then align three to one and two to one. But I just like to hide layers and bring them on individually to keep things simple. The next thing you want to do is make sure your two layers are selected and click on the add mark point button and you'll see three position indicators come up. If you had an extra layer, you'd pick this one and then add the points, but we don't need to do that. With these three points, you kind of want to pick three points between both layers that are roughly in the same spot as each other and try and keep it in a triangle kind of shape. So you might pick one at the base of the tail here, a second one sort of at the front and then maybe one down by the foot. So you kind of have this sort of triangle shape going through. This will help it align the layers. So with our first mark point selected, we right click where we want our point one and right click again on the other model to create a connection between those two points. Then we will click on our second point and we repeat the process. So this time we'll right click on the front and on the front. Doesn't need to be exactly the same position, but as close as you can. 
And then finally number three, and this time I'm going to go down near the foot. With that selected, we then click on align. And then you can just rotate around and check if that's correct. And we can see that's done a pretty good job of merging those two together. If we turn on the rest of our layers, we can see they're all in line as well. With everything aligned, we now need to process this data. So making sure all our layers are turned on and we are in the processing tab, you should now see a process button. So click on that. It will ask which data layers do you want to use and we're going to be using them all. So you can select individual ones if you really wanted to, but we're just going to use all of them and click apply. This can take a while depending on the amount of scans it needs to process, so just be patient. In my case, it's probably going to take about five minutes, so I'm just going to jump ahead to where it's finished. Once the processing has finished, it will ask if you want to export the data now. We don't want to export it right away, so we can just go to cancel and that way we can check how our results turned out first. So as we can see, the results aren't that great in this situation, and that could be down to a few things. The first is I think this object is a little too big for table scanning mode. Table scanning mode is more suitable for objects a little smaller that fit within the frame. You might also be able to add a few more scans to create some more detail in these areas, and that might help clean up the model as well. In its current state, this mesh could be usable, but it would require some post work. If you did have a workable mesh and you're happy with it, to export it, you can go up to File and then Export, and then just export it either as an SDL or an OBJ file in an area that you will find. So that's the end of this video on how to get started with table scanning. In the next video, I'll show the process of scanning in the hands held scan mode. I think hand scanning would be better suited to the target object used in this video due to its size, and it will probably give a cleaner result. But the information in this video should be enough to get you started, and it's up to you to practice and get a feel for how the scanner works. 3D scanning is a skill that takes practice. The more you use it, the better you'll become at picking up its nuances, but it takes time and practice. As always, don't forget to show your support to the channel by liking the video and subscribing. Thanks for watching.